Okie dokie, guys. Welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. So, in this episode, we are going to focus on cables. Actually, the connectors, but also the standards. It's a lot of stuff, but I think it's useful to know a little bit better what are these and what we use them for. Obviously, a lot of you guys already know all of this, but I'm sure a lot of uh, newbies, young people, or maybe someone doesn't have clear a few aspects, it's good to go over these elements. Because these elements are how our gear is connected one to each other, and it's fundamental to know uh, what we can do with them, actually. So we're going to try to understand, first of all, the difference between balanced and unbalanced, okay? Because that is something fundamental. And at that point, we're going to try to understand signal levels. And after that, we're going to take a look at the digital connections and finally the analog connections. OK, so let's jump in immediately with our balanced versus unbalanced, or we could be more precise, actually single ended. And you're going to see that abbreviated as SE a lot of times. So here is a famous picture you can find all over the web where you can see a typical unbalanced or single ended cable where you have one um, wire which is carrying actually the signal. In fact, it's called the hot pole because it is having a signal going through it. While instead the cold pole is usually or a second conductor, which you don't see here, tied that goes together with the shield. That's why, unappropriately, a lot of people talk about semi-balanced cables, but that's that's something that it does not exist. They do that to, to have a little more, um, uh, we could say, protection, shielding. And you're supposed to connect it on both sides. Someone doesn't because hum may occur, but that's a different story. In any case, uh, and this also helps clear, clearly, as we were saying, to um, eliminate, to drain out the interference. It's a, a, a reference, zero voltage, while instead here we have a varying voltage. What is the main difference? In a balance cable, instead, we have three conductors against two of the uh, single-ended. We have one is a hot pole, one wire, one conductor, plus we have also another conductor, which is called maybe unappropriately cold pole because it's also carrying a signal, but it's reversed. In fact, here is something fun to see. You have these two signals traveling together. Plus, clearly, you have the third wire, which is for uh, the, the ground and the shield. Okay, so why do this? does this happen? Because if you have uh, the signal going in the normal direction and the other signal going in the, the, uh, in the reverse direction, as you can see, they're specular. When there is interference going through them, as you can see, you're going to have that little, uh, that little notch, but it's going to go in the same direction at the same place, more or less. So when you reverse them back, you have a null effect. They practically cancel each other, remaining only the good stuff. Because clearly, these interference are reversed and, and they're going to null. They're going to cancel each other. While instead, the good signal is going to remain. And this is the nice result. Which is why a lot of people prefer, not only in the uh, pro environment, but also in hi-fi env environment, more and more, uh, this type of connection. Usually, this is used for very long cables. In fact, from a console all the way to a stage, which is meters and meters and feet and feet of wire. While clearly in our homes, we only have a few feet, a few meters of wire. Nevertheless, you do have an extra protection from that point of view. Plus, clearly, um, a balanced connection is just more uh, strong. It has a higher voltage. So even the volume is going to be higher. And in some cases, that can help a lot. In other cases, it can be worse when you're trying to use old vintage gear, for example. So be careful about that when you're converting, for example, um, balance output to a single-ended input and things like that. 
in any case, these are uh, the main aspects. Usually, and we're going to see that afterwards, you use a XLR type of cable and instead for a classic semi um, single ended, you have an RCA. But once again, we'll, go, we'll get to these specific type of connectors afterwards. OK, so let's proceed now to the signal levels, which is something strictly connected to this and it is important to go through. OK, so uh, this is incomplete, but it's it's useful. And I wanted to show because a lot of times we may we may mix these aspects when we're talking about. I'm, I'm sure you heard about line level or mic level or things like that. OK, so this the smallest and weakest signal is the mic level. OK, the one coming usually from a microphone, but also, for example, from our phono cartridges. Absolutely. See? 2.5 millivolts when you have a more higher type of output 23 but nothing compared to a line level the classic line level which is coming for example from a cd that's where a preamplifier a phono preamp it comes in it helps us here comes the bells when you have to bring this weak signal up to this signal, which is then going to go in our amplifiers, for example. So it's important because each type of uh, voltage of output has its own type of connectors of shielding and cables clearly. So, and, and as you can see, something a lot of people ignore maybe is that the line level is divided within a consumer type like, for example, we set a CD or a normal preamplifier that we use connected to our amplifier. But there's also the pro line level, which there is a difference. Uh, as you can see, one goes minus 10 dBV and one is plus dBU. And the difference is about 12 dB, which is a lot. And things like mixing consoles, special mic preamplifiers or signal processing gear have this high line level. OK, remember, we have to remember this. Plus, there's also the speaker level, which is even more. Here we have a little more information. The speaker level is even higher than the, uh, the line level or even higher than the pro line level which is in fact goes to our speakers as you can see it says here practically one watt uh, i would also like to spend some um, seconds also on the headphone output now techmon was very clear with that video something very banal for a lot of us but i do understand i do see why he did made that video because a lot of people think that a headphone output is something you can use as a line level, but no guys, absolutely not. Actually, a, a headphone is um, is higher, you, so you have to be careful. It's between the line level and the speaker level. So it's quite potent. I mean, you, you have to be careful to what you attach it, because if you attach a headphone output to something that is ready, just prepared to receive just a mic level input, then you're going to have some problems. Remember that. OK, let's start seeing now finally our uh, connectors, our different types of connections, which can be also standards, also cables. It depends from the shape, the form, what we commonly know and use with our digital connections. So clearly we must start off with USB, Universal Stereo Bus USB which in fact, in this case, it's a standard because as you as we all know, we're going crazy for all the different types, even though finally it seems that we're going towards the type C standardization. Now here it looks gigantic. Clearly, we all know that it's teeny weeny, something more like this, but without all this stuff in around. Look how many types we have. Well, usually you're going to find something like this, the type B on a DAC on the input and uh, on the other side, the classic type A, but there, there are various solutions. It depends, even the many ones. But finally, we're going to the type C. And as we all know, uh, USB can also transport voltage, which is good to uh, power some, um, some gear around five volts. 
it now reached as you can see in 2022 the usb version 2 of uh, the various types from one hour to four version two it's a lot and it can deliver up to 80 gigabytes wow and it can be a balanced signal actually and in fact it's still today the best way to connect a pc to a dac to 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 for dsd and for high resolution pcm it's just it's just better okay now, it's important to say something, I think, before we proceed. I should have said this in, in the beginning. We must remember that digital connections, okay, digital cables don't send zeros and ones. They don't send data. They use an analog type of medium voltage, exactly like analog cables. Simply though that instead of a varying type of voltage, they have an intermittent, we could say, voltage. On and off, which clearly means pits and valleys. So uh, at that point, the, uh, the machine on the other side is going to read that on, off, off, on, on, off, 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 on, 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 or whatever it is. And that's going to be translated in uh, data, okay? But the medium is voltage and it's analog. Hence, it's subject to interference to the quality of the cables, etc., etc. That's this is an important point that a lot of people don't think about. They think, oh, it's digital. It's all perfect. It's just gonna go in one side and go out the other side no that's not the case unfortunately unfortunately i would love to have a cableless life i mean not spending all those that money on on cables and all that mess we have behind our machines but unfortunately we do need to pay attention to this okay let's proceed now one of the most famous interconnects types of connection in the digital domain the aes also known as AES slash EBU, which stands for the Audio Engineering Society, AES, and the European Broadcasting Union, EBU, which in the old days they were able to find practically uh, a standard. We're in fact in our third edition, our third version, uh, in the, which was released in 2003. From that there on, nothing really happened actually this is something that was used more in the pro environment in the past but now it's coming back it's present in a lot of DACs and it's excellent as you can imagine because it's balanced in most cases um, for very long connections and usually uses as you can see here an XLR connection but it also can use a BNC here uh, and not only also actually the D sub so there, there's lots of types. That's why it's difficult to, to, to choose if I want to show you a connector or if I want to show you a cable or I just want to talk about standard. You have to do a mix, okay? Now let's see, for example, as you can see, it says IES EBU, but you just see a uh, normal uh, inputs and outputs of XLR cables, connectors. Now you have to be careful. I mean, you can't put a microphone here, for example. No, this is to input or to send out a digital signal. Okay, the XLR is usually the type of connector at 110 ohms, while instead the normal XLR cables, like the normal standard one, is 75. So there's already a difference there, for example. You just can't use one cable for the other. It, you can, I mean, it's going to work, but it's not going to be optimal. And this connection, this balanced digital connection, can go in PCM all the way up to 768 kilohertz per 32 bits. But, um, I mean, it can go even higher. I mean, that's just what it's at now. It can also um, send DSD, but only DOP, which is DSD over PCM which is still DSD. I mean, a lot of people wrote me, no, that's not, it, it's, it, it's transformed into PCM. No, it's a PCM envelope, okay? And the DCSD is absolutely uncorrupted, put inside. Otherwise, the machine can't read it. That's why they use that. And also, in, this type of connection can do multi-channel. 
Okay, let's proceed now when I would say the most famous of all. The SPDIF, which stands for Sony slash Philips Digital Interface Format. Once again, people got together and say, hey, let's do it this way. Uh, now the format, the standard has been updated and it can go all the way up to 24 bits slash 192 kilohertz or DSD64 again uh, via DOP as a stereo signal, which is good, which is, I think it's still very, very good. You're not going to find that many recordings or, or records or things out there more than that. Clearly, if you're a DSD buff, this is not the connection for you. You need a USB cable and a USB DAC, etc., etc. And uh, it, it can be composed by different types, as you can see, of connectors, which one could simply think it's a RCA connection. And it's true, it is an RCA connection, but it's called uh, also because how it's built inside a coaxial type of cable, which has a precise type of impedance. Uh, and here you, you, you usually find it, for example, this orange type of RCA input, this is the coaxial. Otherwise you have optical. Very strangely, yes, also known as Toslink or Toshiba Link, which uh, where the information travels not as voltage, but as uh, lead, light, light impulses, which is different actually. But it's the same standard, okay? Both these. Clearly, you can also send a multi channel type of information, but not at that high resolution. You have to go a little bit down. The Toslink is also something very similar to the. ADAT, which is used for digital uncompressed multi-channel connections. We can proceed now to another standard, very famous, mainly adopted in the past for a video slash audio experience, the HDMI, also known as High Definition Multimedia Interface. But you, in the recent period, in the last 10 years, it has been used a lot for uh, audio. A lot of DACs have this input, which is something good, or simply if you're using your Blu-ray or DVD player, a lot of people send the audio out, then there's a little switch you can use and send that to a high quality DAC if you don't have, for example, SPDIF outputs. Or I also did a video, here is a link, where you can put send the HDMI cable with all its stuff inside. Sometimes it's propriety protected, so you cannot send DSD uh, from uh, via or high or high res audio through the SPDIF. Hence, you have to use this, but you need a converter to use it as I2S because a lot of DACs were using that in the re very recent period of time. Now things are starting to change. There are also DACs that just have a simple HDMI connection and are capable of extracting um, DSD and uh, SPDIF. Fantastic. Nevertheless, it's good to say that we have um, a lot of, uh, of DACs using this type of protocol, which is even earlier. I mean, it's in the 80s. We were mainly used inside machines actually to connect one to each other. In fact, you have to be very careful because you cannot use a long distance type of cables with this protocol. You have to use a specific type. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. But people know that. Manufacturers know that. So don't worry. But this is not a standard. I2S is not a standard. So you may end up with a DAC and a player, a source that do not talk to each other. So that's a big problem of I2S, and that's why a lot of people, a lot of people, a good number of people, let's say, uh, are going back, for example, T plus A to a, a simple um, HDMI type of connection. HDMI can go with linear PCM, LPCM, up to 24 bits and 192 kilohertz, or DSD64. While instead, the uh, I2S protocol can deliver as much as you want, practically. I wanted to show you I2S can be not only HDMI, it can also, also go with the RJ45 type of connection, for example. Actually, anything you want, you just need a plug with the little uh, wires connected. In any case, um, and I2S can go much more. I mean, the, the top of the tops in PCM 
usually 768 kilohertz per 32 bits all the way up to dst 1024 wow okay guys now let's pass to our analog connections okay now let's jump in immediately with our classic rca connection the radio corporation of america also known as phono connector actually a lot of people called it phono in the, in the past or chinch uh, like in germany And this is the classic unbalanced single-ended connection used for a variety of audio but also video signals for example and other types of information in general so it's very very handy and everyone uses it uses it clearly probably not the best especially in specific type of connections very distant connections here the component video was used in the past and other things like that different types clearly okay let's pass now to the xlr instead connector which is the classic three pole as we said in the beginning how it works the xlr which stands for external line return is another type of connection balanced mainly used in the pro environment it comes from there but um now a lot of uh, a lot of people a lot of hi-fi guys are using mainly uh balanced connection hence xlr cables uh, for analog and also for digital as we have seen the aes ebu in it, which is nice and stable and nice with a strong uh signal as we said before which meaning that it, it has this higher voltage which is four volts instead of the two volts of the rca connection there's also a, an, an earlier version of this uh, used a lot in, in europe in the in the past century the tukel which is something very similar and use it um, it's a fantastic connector which um, screwed on gear and it also had silver connections fantastic for example in my um, telefunken i have that top of the notch but that was the old type of xl connection xlr now we have these clearly there's all the variety of mini xlr connectors and for, for various use and implementations okay let's proceed with the next one the din connector the deutsches institut für normung the german institute for standardization see they wanted to have standardization in the past i don't know why we are having we are suffering in this today in any case here as you can imagine we have several connections that fall under the din used for a huge variety of stuff as you can see like the recording playback type that we find in old boom boxes like mine or, or uh, for example in tone arms you have a specific number of, of uh, pins it, de it depends how they are located i mean it's a world din is a world and the, the most used in, in audio is the three slash one 180 uh, degree or the five slash 180 degree like uh, in fact the rec pb type and you usually found it in tape recorders or amplifiers as i said in the tone arm but also used for uh, midi midi okay now let's go to the big family of here i don't know why in wikipedia they call it phone connector but it's, it's the most comprehensive page to um to describe the different types of jacks yes also known as trs or ring sleeve the different parts separated parts of a connection and as you can see it can be balanced or unbalanced it depends and there is a huge variety here of so many types of jacks and trs the tt trs trrrs the trrrrs <laughs> never ending there's so many and these are mainly used uh, we know them at least for earphones headphones or pro gear like for instruments the typical uh, the typical one 
I wanted to show you here is the, the 3.5 classical uh, type of connection that you use for your phone, for your iPod, which may be uh, ad adopted for sometimes with this connection here, which is the 6.35 millimeter. Here you can see them better. Usually we have these two for our headphones. This is just a single-ended, meaning unbalanced type of connection to that we, that we usually adopt for our headphones or, for example, instruments. Uh, a lot of times you use this connection, this TR type of TRS, instead of a balanced type of XLR. It depends. In fact, a lot of times you may have seen this type of connector on Pro Gear or something connected to a recording, sound cards, interfaces, things like that. This is a combo of the XLR type, 3 pole, see, but also the TRRS can go here, okay? And this is for a balanced type of input, of channel. In any case, apart from this, we also have a lot of balanced type of connections that are very strange, that are getting famous and more famous, uh, again, associated to headphones. Something typical is um, this type. As you can see, you have sometimes, this would be probably the best option to have one single XLR per drive. Now, it's important to make, make a distinction. One thing is a balanced signal. One thing is a fully balanced system, meaning that also the headphones and also clearly the uh, headphone amplifier need to have a fully balanced circuit and the driver on the other side. Otherwise, it's, it's just a balanced connection, but you're not having the full benefits of this type of connection. Another strange type is this four pin uh, XLR, which, which seems slightly crooked. One, the fourth pole is a little higher than the first one. This is another balanced connection for the two channels. But there, I mean, there you guys, there's so many. I'll, I'll try to show you a few. This, there's this great uh, Moon Audio website where, where I wanted to show you. They, he put together a lot of balanced connections together with the unbalanced connections. But for example, the 2.5 millimeter, see, can be balanced. Sometimes you're only going to find that in a headphone amplifier. But also 3.5 can be balanced. And the one we were seeing now, the dual 3-pin XLR type. Or the 4-pin type, see? These are all balanced. Or other strange things like the RSA ALO. Or uh, the um, this one, which, which is the 4.4 millimeter TRRRS, also known as Pentacon, and it goes on and on. So these are just some examples I wanted to show you. Another important connector that you mainly find in the pro environment is the so-called Speak On. Maybe you've seen this very round and one hole connector. This is usually the connector that goes inside here. Now, this was invented by Neutrik for a pro connection, mainly. I mean, you usually don't... It's very rare to find this in hi-fi. In any case, you can find it, but mainly in the pro environment, between amplifiers and speakers. And in fact, it can carry a higher voltage. Let's proceed now on a very famous type of connection used in the pro environment, but once again, we are finding more and more in our hi-fi systems it's the b and c which can be unbalanced or balanced for video or audio and it screws on as you can see here is a normal rca xlr toslink usb hdmi and here is our b and c which usually sticks out and you have to be careful it's a little more delicate but it's a it offers a better connection to uh, in respect to uh, just the connection not necessarily the signal but the connection is more firm clearly proceeding we have another important less used type is the d sub or d sub miniature which comes from the computer system world again this is mainly used in pro gear but in some the esoteric type of hi-fi gear you can find it, especially the db25 and there are some examples digital examples as you can see here but also analog examples so you can use it in, in both cases 
Woo. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the different types of connections, connectors, and standards. These are the main ones, clearly. We can do probably another video where we go more in depth on the strange ones, but there's so many there. Okay, guys, please leave your comments here below. Please leave your comments also related to the ones you think should be mentioned more or you want to know more information about. Okay, thank you again for watching and remember that music is born and along. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.